Ili Frasi. Gina ni mastakalum gi hinazoku. Ni mastakalum gi kurasanu. Zani masfigu, nani nas nyahu. Ua frasa maisadzu, parabari butehi. San udi fendi, i hinangi. I kotura, i languahi. I ali, i hanum zani tanu chamoru. Ni in a choco diretsu gerenanzo estata. Esti wa fit ma gehelo e bibea. Zani vanarahu i vanderan guahan. Buenas and half a day, Tauta Guahan Zan Saipan. Guahusi Tiffany Kitagua. Hello, people of Guam and Saipan. I am Tiffany Kitagua, your host for the third season of Historia and Islata. I invite you to join me every Monday in March for a new episode on this Sorensen Media Group television station. March is the designated month locally given to the people of Guam to celebrate the Tsamoro culture, language, way of life, and of course, the people. Although we celebrate the Tsamoro Pride every day, March allows everyone in the community to come together and share with one another anything and everything Tsamoro. Coming up in this first episode of Historia ni Islata, we will take in the Tsamoro language with Polly Eric Forbes. Rita Nauta of Guampedia.com will join us and share with us some facts on our island of Guahan. Lieutenant Governor of Guam Ray Tenorio sits with us to discuss the history of the Guam seal and the Guam flag. Then later, Elisia Tovis Cali will share her Caliguan skills with us. And to close out the show, the international award winning cultural dance troupe in Netnungef Pagu will perform a number for us. So stay right there. Historia ni Islata starts right after this. Welcome back to Historia ni Islata. We will now listen in as Rita Nauta of Guampedia.com share some interesting facts about Guam. Here on Guam, music is so much a part of island life. At almost any gathering or guput, from a backyard barbecue to a village fiesta, besides delicious foods, you're bound to get an earful of music and song. What's amazing is that a certain form of Chamorro singing that is still done today dates back to ancient times. Buenas and half a day from Guampedia.com, a community project that makes Guam history and the unique Chamorro heritage of the Mariana Islands accessible online. At any gathering, kanta or song have always been a part of our island's cultural heritage. In fact, Chamorros have a unique singing form that dates back to ancient times that entails people singing impromptu verses in a call and response style. Practitioners refer to the genre as adzuti, meaning to throw verses back and forth. Early missionaries of the 17th century observed the practice of poetic debate that took place between clans who gathered to compete to see who could sing the most verses. Now known as Kantan Samurita, the verses are not only poetic, but contain layers of meaning. The most popular usage of Kantan Samarita is to tease without causing shame or embarrassment to anyone, but rather to have a bit of fun. Learn more amazing facts about our island and history at Guampedia.com. You can also pick up a copy of Guampedia's 101 Amazing Facts About Guam at UOG's Triton Bookstore, Iputian or Tse'lu in the Chamorro Village, and the Guam Museum Gift Shop. Your support of this publication will help Guampedia continue to make Guam's rich history accessible online. Biba Guahan, Biba Tsumoru. Sizuas Maasi. Sizuas Maasi Rita for that look into Guahan and her past. We personally want to thank Rita and the Guampedia staff for their continued support for the past three years in this annual Mess Tsumoru television series. Moving on, we will now listen in as Polly Eric Forbes tells us what the Tsumoru word for sky is. Buenas afanielos, Guahusi Pali Eric. This year, 2017, is the international year of reconnecting with nature. So let's learn the Chamorro words for four very basic components of the environment around us. Let's start with what's above, Longit. The Chamorro word for the sky is Longit. We are blessed to have beautiful skies in our islands. From our Langit, we get abundant sunshine or abundant rainfall, both necessary for life. 
Our ancestors depended on what they saw at night in their langit when they sailed across the ocean guided by the stars. Our poems and songs speak about the jewels of our langit, sun, moon, stars, and clouds. We have been spared enormous air pollution due to the size of our islands. Yet, from time to time, our langit is covered with a haze created by air pollution from heavily industrialized China. Once in a blue moon, volcanic ash from the northern islands falls on Guam. Due to changes in climate, our langit doesn't always provide enough rain, and we deal with drought issues and grass fires, leading to soil erosion. We cannot take the gifts of our langit for granted. Let's do our part to maintain the cleanliness of the air of our langit and follow the law about burning. Let's reduce our driving by following a one-direction drive plan, if possible, at least some days. Let's stop smoking, or at least do it outdoors. When possible, open windows instead of turning on the AC. These are just a few ways we can be mindful of the air we breathe, the sunshine and rain we enjoy, thanks to our Longit. Stay right there. When we return, we will sit with the official keeper of the Guam seal and learn more about the history of our iconic coat of arms, seal, and flag. But first, can you answer this question? Were you able to answer our little trivia? Here is the question again. The Guam seal, centered on the Guam flag, is an oval outlined in red that comes to two pointed ends. This shape is in reference to what item in ancient Samoru history? Is it A, the laddie stone, B, the sling stone, or C, the proa? The answer is B, the sling stone. The sling stone is a weapon that was skillfully wielded by the ancient Samorus. The Guam flag made its first appearance on July 6, 1917. If you do the math, that makes this year, 2017, the 100th anniversary since the original flag design was approved and recorded in our nation's capital. Did you know that there is an individual designated as the official keeper of Guam seal? That person is the Lieutenant Governor of Guam, Ray Tenorio. Thank you for joining us today, Lieutenant Governor Ray Tenorio. So I would like to ask the question everyone is wondering, which came first, our chicken or the egg? Was it the Guam seal first or the Guam flag? Actually, the Guam flag came first. The oh. Guam seal came later. So the original concept was to have a Guam flag designed, mm -hmm. and the Guam flag was designed with the essentially the sling stone shape of the, uh, uh, of the center of the Guam flag. And of course, you had the symbols of the coconut tree, the Agana River, which is a debate. Uh, and of course, Retidian Point is not two lovers point that you see in the distance because you see the shape of the land actually is an appendage. Uh, so it actually is Retidian Point, not two lovers. But the, um, the Guam seal evolved from that because they wanted to create a seal that I'm the keeper of as a lieutenant governor to make sure that uh, that seal could be used as an embossed um, part of a official document, basically making official certified documents from a, the Guam seal. So they put the coat of arms, it's called, with the language around it, uh, and that has changed over time as well. Mm -hmm. So we're saying that it was the seal first. It was the seal, um, sorry, after the Guam flag. So the Guam okay. flag came before the Guam seal. I see, okay. So can you tell us about more about the image that the Guam seal is portraying? You did mention Retidian Point, mm -hmm. you mentioned the river. I know there are some iconic images in the seal. Sure. Can you tell us more about that? Well, of course, the, the, the biggest um, icon is the sling stone, which is the ancient Chamorros, the forefathers of the people of Guam. The Chamorros use uh, for everything from hunting to fighting each other uh, in the, the tribal wars, if you will, in the hundreds of years in the Chamorro history prior to the Spanish coming into the island. Uh, and this, this, uh, this icon, which is the core of what uh, was a tool for the Chamorros, uh, just like the laddie stone was to the foundation of the homes of the Chamorros, is the, is the shape of that sling stone. 
and that sling stone embodies uh, the retinian point as a landmass uh, as opposed to the two lovers point and then you've got uh, the the proa now uh, there are many people who have come to me prior and said you actually have the proa or the sekman um, the boat call it what you will uh, which has the uh, the, 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 the mass on the wrong side, but you know, that's a debate for the mariners. Mm -hmm. um, but that is the symbol that is part of the uh, Guam uh, flag, which became part of the Guam seal. And then the mouth of the Agana River, which is the opening where the coconut tree comes from, uh, is essentially uh, what we think is the Agana River. And again, there's some debate on whether or not that was an outlet or was it the Agana River or was it the river right across here? Because another gentleman had told me that the officers club uh, which was right across from Adloop, uh, is where people used to see and look over to Retidian, and that might be the, the mouth. But the symbolism is the water, of course, the land, the coconut tree, and uh, the proa, which is a, a fantastic vessel that was created by the ancient Chamorros. Thank you for your time, Lieutenant Governor, and we'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Welcome back to Historia Ni Eslata. Over the past three years on this show, we have highlighted several traditional and Samoru comfort foods. This year we will feature several types of tessa. Tessa is the word we use here on island for appetizer. In this episode, we will watch our good friend Alicia Tovis Cali of Cali Cakery prepare everyone's favorite, beef caliguin. Off day Guam, my name is Alicia. Welcome to Cali Cakery. Today I'm gonna to show you my version of the beef caliguin. Okay, so today I am using flank steak. You could use any kind of beef that you want as long as there's not a lot of fat on it. Um, you're going to need onions. I use green onions, fresh lemons, calamansi, and lemon powder, and salt. So um, just to be on the safe side, I like to cook my beef a little. So I would be throwing the beef on the grill with the onions. So first, I like to, and this thing, everyone has to have this at home. It's a great tool. It cooks everything from your eggs to your chopstick to your beef caliguin. Everyone has to have something like this at home. So I threw down the onions, the green onions. You can even throw in some garlic in there. And the beef. So what it is is just to cook the beef enough so it's not raw. I know that when I was growing up, pelagrins were made with raw meat. But being in the restaurant business, I don't want to take a chance of anyone's life. So I kind of cook my meat a little and then let the lemon finish it up. So I just cook it real quick. Can I get a bowl? And the good thing about cooking your beef as well is when you cook pepper, if you really like your caliguins to be hot, fresh pepper gets much hotter when you throw it on the grill. I don't know why, just for some reason, it just seems to get much hotter. So when you cook it, it really brings out the heat in the pepper. So throwing that down as well. So you're really just aiming to brown the outside. Of the beef. And not cook it thoroughly. Just enough to brown the outside. So you can at least get any kind of bad things out of it. Okay, so take your beef, put it in a bowl. So it should look something like this. And then you add your lemons. So you have your lemon powder. I don't have any measurement for it. It's really up to you. So your fresh lemons. Squeeze as much as you can out of that. And I also like to use our local lemon. This gives it a much 
different tastes than our regular U.S. lemons, okay? And then you add your salt. And then again, the salt is really up to how salty or how sour you would like it. Some people like it much more sour than salty. Okay, then you just mix until, I know that for me when I'm making a color, I'm gonna have to try it a few times in order for it to become just right. And then sometimes when I'm trying it, I always have to ask someone else to try it as well. So, you know, it's really up to you. But um, sometimes also what I like to do is add cucumbers, and the, um, what is it called, chili sauce, the garlic chili sauce, just to give it another kind of taste, but it's really up to you. So this is how it would turn out. And that's your, that's my version of the beef caliguin. Happy eating, have a good day. Tune in again next time as Alicia will prepare some fresh fish caliguin for us. Historia Nieslata will return with a dance segment featuring international award-winning cultural dance group in Nungef Pagu. For the final segment in this episode of Historia Nieslata, let me introduce to you Vince Regis and his award-winning cultural dance group in Nungef Pagu with a blessing. Today, uh, what you're seeing today is the traditional blessing from Inet Nungef Pagu. In Nungef Pagu, we created this several years ago. The first part is a basically a traditional permission chant that kind of asks permission to go into a sacred place or to ask uh, a, a permission to, to walk on and pass through this land. The second part is, uh, a, uh, is a, a traditional chant that I created or a song that I created called Ginin Hagu. And it's about basically Ginin Hagu means from you. And and what we are saying is we're giving thanks to everyone and from God and from, um, and from our ancestors that all of this is not possible except, uh, without you. And so, Kenan Hagu. Hold on.
Undankalu Nasidzuis Maasi for watching this episode of Historian Ieslata. Remember, every March is Tsumoru Month, but we don't have to wait until March to celebrate our Tsumoru history, culture, language, and people. Pasadios! Viva Tsumoru! Viva Mes Tsumoru!